Our next lightning talk, thank you, uh, is from Cara Kennedy. Cara is an educator, researcher, and writer in the areas of digital and AI literacy, technology, and science fiction. Pew, 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 pew. Uh, she believes that technology is for everyone and has seen the pressing need for digital and AI literacy and skill building across all levels of society. Her work as a learning advisor at the University of Canterbury and Monaco Institute of Technology has given her valuable insights into people's struggles with technology and ways to make it more accessible. She believes science fiction is an important avenue for helping to spark interest in STEM topics and to imagine a better future. Please welcome Cara Kennedy to the stage. When I was little, I went to a school that emphasized grammar and punctuation. We learned all the rules. We even diagrammed sentences, treating language almost like mathematics. Now, not everybody cared about these details, but I soaked them up. I'm a grammar stickler for life, and I will defend the Oxford comma until the end. <laughs> but the world has moved on. AI tools like autocorrect, spell check, Grammarly, and now ChatGPT mean that many people use their brain space for other things. Now, does that mean that my skills are worthless or we shouldn't teach grammar punctuation anymore? No, it means technology has eased a pain point. But we still need to know the basics and whether the AI tools get it right or wrong. Now, the problem is we often spend far too long teaching skills that are losing importance and not enough time training people for the wide range of technologies. Let's not make the same mistake with AI. We should be practical about how we prepare for an AI-driven world and ensure everyone is prepared with digital and AI literacy. So what's all the fuss about AI anyway? Well, as a science fiction scholar, I have to admit this genre has not done very well to prepare us. <laughs> AI on screen is often masculine and violent, perpetuating stereotypes. Meanwhile, in the real world, AI has quietly crept into our lives through our phones, our TVs, and other smart devices. Then OpenAI's ChatGPT generative AI tool was released to the public, and we're now facing a paradigm shift in how AI will change jobs, education, art, everything. For those of us in the cultural and creative sectors, we might be wondering how human culture and art will change as we merge our imaginative vision with that of the program machines. Now, you might have heard AI compared to a calculator, just another tool to help us. But a calculator has a very specific set of rules. AI can control what you see online and where you go. It can communicate with you and learn. It can read, write, analyze, create, and more. If we want to use this comparison, I'd suggest it's more like this. If a calculator is like this rocking horse, very fixed and basic in what it can do, then AI is more like a real horse with a much broader range of actions and some level of unpredictability. Now, you probably don't need skill to ride the rocking horse, but you do need some level of training and guidance to ride the real horse if you want a safe and enjoyable interaction and to get where you want to go. And here's where AI literacy comes in. But we're still not even prepared with adequate digital literacy. Here's what the research tells us. There's a digital divide in New Zealand. 20 to 33% of New Zealanders can't upload documents, navigate cloud storage, or create a Word or Google Doc. Higher percentages struggle with online safety and security. New Zealand technology organizations and the cultural heritage sector want more emphasis on digital skills. But unfortunately, so far, our schools, workplaces, and society in general have struggled to prepare us. I've seen young people who don't know how to make a dollar sign on a keyboard for a password or download a PDF because they've only ever used a cell phone. I've seen PhD students putting paragraph breaks after every line because they don't know how to use Word. I've seen managers and executives struggle with presentations and spreadsheets because they never learned how to use them, and they're embarrassed about it. There's a distressing tendency to think that somehow we magically master these complex machines without proper training. The skills gap is real. Now add AI to the mix. Now, even though we might hear the same line that technology will make everything easier and that AI is so good and intuitive that we don't need help, 
let's not buy it. AI threatens to further widen the digital divide because it requires yet more new digital skills. And the gender gap is already appearing, with women less likely to use AI in personal and professional life. Now globally, around 75% of organizations say they plan to use AI and adopt it in the next five years, but only 42% say they plan to prioritize training their workers to use it. But they rank technology literacy six out of the top 10 core skills. How can we stop leaving the skill building to chance? Well, we can start with encouraging basic awareness about what AI tools are, what they can do, and how they can help people in everyday life. Now, if you're out there thinking, I don't need AI, I can do things perfectly fine myself. I hear you. I don't need spell check, but it certainly speeds up the proofreading process. I don't need AI to research and write, but I may eventually fall behind those who do use it. Now, if you're thinking, I tried it and it didn't work, or it can't do my very specific niche task, I understand. Maybe it can't. But maybe it can and you just don't know it yet. Or maybe it might in the near future. It pays to be prepared. It can also save you a lot of time and just be a lot of fun to use. Now next, I think we need structure to help guide educators and trainers about what AI skills our current and future workforce will need. Toward that end, I've created the AI Literacy Framework by taking the UNESCO Digital Literacy Framework and mapping AI skills onto it. So the first thing is hardware and software. We need to know which AI tool and model to use and how to use different features on different devices. Second is information and data literacy. We need to be able to use AI to access information and organize data. We must evaluate the AI outputs for accuracy and usefulness and know how to change our techniques to get even better outputs. Third is communication and collaboration. We must be able to converse with AI systems and chatbots and collaborate and AI, share AI content with others. There's also the tricky question about whether and how we acknowledge that we've used AI. Fourth is digital content creation. We must be able to use AI to create and personalize new content and adapt existing content. But we must also understand the legal and ethical issues. AI models were trained on many data sets, including the internet and sites such as Wikipedia, which have known biases. It was also trained on art from creatives who never gave permission for their content to be used in that way. Legal systems around the world have to face the challenge of machine-generated content. Who owns it? Who's responsible for it? Indigenous communities are concerned about new risks to their data and its cultural, social, and economic significance. Creating content may be easier now, but the ethics are still complex. Fifth is safety. We need to know the risks and liabilities of using AI tools and what our responsibilities are. We should review privacy policies, protect our health and well-being, and consider the environmental impact. Six is problem solving. We need to use our common sense and critical thinking to cross-check information and analyze outputs. We should be able to use AI to create actionable insights and to improve our workflows. And we need to be able to continually upskill and learn the basics about things like machine learning, algorithms, and other AI concepts to help inform our decisions and usage of AI tools. And lastly, we need to be able to use and customize AI tools in our field or industry bringing together our specialist knowledge and skills to make the most of AI in a safe and productive way. Now, what do educators need to build into their courses and mindsets to prepare us for this AI-driven future? Abstinence-based education doesn't work. <laughs> Students are using and will continue to use AI tools whether or not we teach them how to do so safely and responsibly, and so will teachers. <laughs> Right now, many are using things like ChatGPT like a search engine, but that's not where it shines. Detection doesn't work. AI is probably always going to outpace attempts to detect it because it's meant to imitate us. Now let's acknowledge it's a challenge to teach when the ground is constantly shifting underneath you and the things that you learned and loved, like me and grammar, might not be as important as they used to be but we desperately need a future-focused education system that prioritizes digital and AI literacy skill building. We need to ask, what serves our students today and tomorrow? Is this skill something that I'm holding on to because it's comfortable or it's tradition? What new skills are needed? 
If there was ever a time for the end of silos and the integration of disciplines, it's now. We need English majors with prompting skills. We need computer science majors with deep philosophical ethics education. We need law grads with AI expertise. We need people working in cultural heritage who understand artifacts and algorithms. For those of us who have already completed traditional education, we need lifelong learning and professional development opportunities so we don't leave AI literacy to chance. Now, AI literacy means developing new skills, but it also means we can value and respect the skills we already have. Knowing when to take AI out for a ride and sometimes when to leave it behind is also an important skill. Let's not allow gender, class, age, or anything else to decide who's prepared or not. Let's not allow the digital divide to become the AI divide. I invite you to make AI literacy a priority. Bring your friends, family, and coworkers along on the journey so we don't leave anyone behind. Thank you.